Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax. Your hosts navigate through the twisty, turning, but never boring world. Five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Coming to you live from COG Studios on a Thursday, February 6th. The LA Galaxy getting ready to welcome everybody to Dignity Health Sports Park for the very first time with the Victoria Block party coming up this Saturday. Uh, right now, I think I'm actually going to be out there, so hopefully we'll see some of you out there uh, and saying hi. I think Larry Morgan, not on Twitter, might even be there as well. So uh, we're rocking and rolling, ready for the season to go. Uh, big, big news across the galaxy and across MLS. A collective bargaining agreement has been agreed upon. So uh, you're definitely going to want to stick around as I attempt to explain to you all of the intricacies and nuances that are now going to be uh, affecting your LA Galaxy and how that goes. And of course, uh, a lot of other stuff to go on to. Possibly a Jonathan Dos Santos injury. We're going to talk about a preseason scrimmage that we're not allowed to talk about. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, so a whole bunch of stuff to do. And to help me do all of that, Miss Sophie the Cannon Nicolau back in the studio. Sophie, how's it going? It's going epic. Thanks so much for having me. And let me just say that this ambiance new intro lighting is so 50 cent in the club. <laughs> 50 cent I mean, in the club. I don't know what to do with myself right now. I don't know whether to pour myself a cocktail or just relax and talk about football. Uh, I was going to say, you know, it, Sophie, if we're not having fun, then <laughs> it's really not worth doing. Uh, that's that's at least that's my that's my take on it. If we're not having fun, then it's not worth doing. Um, so <laughs> so we're having fun. The lights are fun. The music is fun. You Listen, know? folks out there, Josh has uh, upgraded in here. And let me tell you, this season is going to be a ton of fun. Appreciate what he delivers week in, week out. He does it out of his own pocket. Josh, you're rocking it, man. It looks Thank good you. in here. Thank you, Sophie. Yeah, we're, we're pumped. Uh, live show coming up on 2.22 at 2 p.m. 2.22 at 2. It's very easy to remember. Lots, Lots of, of twos. twos this season. That's good. Two is a good number, right? It's an I even number. So. I mean, eight's a better number, but I like even numbers. <laughs> you can you can make twos into eight. That's an easy one to get to. You know, two plus two Have plus you done two. the stats on um, the Galaxy winning the, the championship in even or odd years yet? Do no, I that? haven't. Uh, let's okay, see. 2002, have... 2005. Oops. 2011, Oops. 2012, yes. 2014. We like that. So we do. M more evens than odds, but I don't think it, I, I unfortunately I don't think it matters that was much. 2014 the last time? It was it feels like forever ago, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, as long as we don't turn into Arsenal, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's that, I mean that's it's been a pretty drastic slide for your arsenal over there so um I'm I'm going to let's I'm, park that. Let's, uh, let's just let let's, it, let's go back just, to talking about the lighting in here. That it's amazing. That works for me uh that works for me. Uh yeah, somebody's asking if we're going to have a 2020 uh, COG t-shirt. Yes, we will. We'll have something coming out. We're actually we're designing things right now behind the scenes, and I'll just say that the Sophie part of that design thing is fire. <laughs> All right, so we, we saw something, we saw a preview, and Sophie was involved the, in this portion, and it was, you know, Eric said that he wanted to be Sophie. I said I wanted to be Sophie after this, so we'll we'll see how that all pans out. But that is a little tease. Something's coming. We are working on something. I mean, so. I want to be Eric when he does the game previews, so we're all even, right? Every, everybody wants to be Eric right. whenever he does the game previews. I don't think anybody wants to, like, write the game previews, however. So um, that's that's the tough part on on all this uh, is making sure he gets it. And then he's now he's starting to give me like music requests. He's like, hey, so I need this kind of like moody music. I'm it. like, so uh, we'll, we'll he's see. How elevated it the game. He has. It's about time he became a diva. <laughs> it's, I don't think he needs any help. <laughs> I don't think he needs any help. The Portuguese diva. That's that works for me too. Yeah, it's that perfect. works for me. All right, uh, let's get to a little LA Galaxy news, and we'll eventually walk you into this CBA stuff because um, I'm sure some of you, your eyes are going to gloss over and you're going to fall over. But I can tell you that I have spent almost, uh, let's see, yeah, 12 hours, just about 12 hours going over, going over almost every detail that I could find about the CBA, and I want everybody to know that there is there is no actual CBA. Um, we have not seen that and it has not been released because it hasn't been ratified. Um, so what we're seeing is a summary of what people are saying is in the CBA, which is always fun, which means it's an interpretation. So I'm giving you my interpretation of an interpretation of the CBA. So um, we'll see. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this... pour, a, pour a cup of tea or a cocktail and get ready for this. Josh has his blue paper and his spreadsheets out. I do. I have, a, I have a lot of stuff. 
I You're love lucky. All stuff. Uh, preseason scrimmage against the Vancouver Whitecaps. This is the scrimmage that didn't happen, but it did happen. Um, it's the scrimmage that uh, at the last minute media was locked out of. Uh, there's probably some pretty good reasons for that, and we'll discuss those. But uh, the LA Galaxy, in in what we can assume was dominating fashion, won a uh, won the game against Vancouver four to one. It was at Disney Health Sports Park on Tuesday. And media was a, was originally invited for this. Actually, Larry Morgan, not on Twitter, drove all the way there, got there, and then found <laughs> out that the uh, the the according to uh, the statement that I got was that both technical staffs requested that the game be played behind closed doors, away from the media, and then Vancouver's Twitter account went and tweeted everything that happened. So you can read into that how you want to read. Um, you know, there's there's certainly some conspiracy theories, and we'll talk to you about those conspiracy theories and tell you they're probably right. Um, we know. As what a matter of fact, we know that there are certain players that played. We saw some pictures that included Sasha Kleschen, Perry Kitchen, Christian Pavone, uh, Alexander Katai, uh, Emiliano Insua, who had just arrived at Dignity Health Sports mm. Park that day, I believe. Uh, he is in and training with the club now, and I believe he played as well. Uh, Efrain Alvarez, Ethan Zubak, and Julian Araujo also played. Now, we also are pretty sure that there were two 45-minute sort of uh, sub patterns there where the starters quote unquote starters played for the first 40, 45 minutes Sophie and then the quote unquote second team came in mm -hmm. for the second 45 minutes that seems about what happened mm -hmm. um, with this uh, especially when is this you... according to the Vancouver Whitecaps well I mean some of it was listen uh, <laughs> people were joking that the Vancouver Whitecaps and their Twitter following and their engagement went up about 10,000 percent because all the LA Galaxy fans were like no who scored for the Galaxy and they're like we can only talk about our players <laughs> um, so Anyway, so as you look at all this, um, we know that Alexander Katai scored a goal because the Galaxy put out a video of it. And it was a cracker. I know. So tell me you about your love already for Alexander Katai. And remember, keep it PG. Because okay. I know I know the word you want to use. I know. And you can't use that word. In a nutshell, can I tell the LA Galaxy Nation what happened exactly? So I'm at MLS Media Day. And uh, at, at, at first glance, I'm like, where are the LA Galaxy players? No one's here. And eventually, you know, uh, Katai comes out and... He sits down and I, it's like an episode of Vikings, right? <laughs> so he sits down and you're like, um, I don't want to mess with this guy ever. And he's not even breathed one word. So I asked him a question and I said to him, you know, m perhaps not a lot of people know about you. What do you think the Galaxy Nation can expect? They're very excited. And he, and I will refrain from using language, but yes. he came back at me as if to say, listen, I don't know who you are, where you're from, or where that accent comes from, but my name is Mr. Katai, and I will do my talking on the field. He literally just kicked me out and said, I'm going to show the LA Galaxy fans what I can do on the pitch. I'm not going to talk about myself, sell myself, try to tell you of all my skill sets, et cetera, et cetera. I got scared, and I walked away from that, and I turned... Uh, to Delmi and I said, this guy is going to cause all sorts of problems. I, he seems like I that way. I feared him at first, and right. now I love him. Yes, I, I think, listen, he was a problem that you had to worry about when you played the Chicago Fire, and I mm. remember, you know, whenever the Galaxy would play, you would sort of say, okay, who's dangerous? And on the Fire, there wasn't too many. You know, you had Bastian Schweinsteiger, and you had Alexander Katai, where the real ones you're, you're actually worried about. Um, Katai has been... Um, he's just a solid player, and he's reliable. And I think at that position, that's exactly what they're looking for. And he's no nonsense. And we at the at first we were so like, oh no, he's wearing the number seven. Right. That was the confirmation that day. It was almost like a dagger to the heart as well. But at the same time, he's exactly what this team needs. A little bit of putting it about. You know, I don't think I don't. When was the last time LA Galaxy had that kind of player? Do you think? Do, do, oh, do I dare say De Jong like for yeah. a brief period? I mean, you could say that. My, my <laughs> mind, anytime you go to like enforcer sort of <laughs> yeah. tough guy would be Nigel De Jong or Dima Kovalenko. Or, you know, it's like you have to go back that far. Um, there's some guys who have just been, you know, bruisers. I mean, mm. even Alan Gordon was kind of a bruiser in his own way. But I think he's going to be a bruiser with a heart and right. skill. I think he's going to bring a lot to this team. So I was I was scared at first, but... Yes, fell in love very quickly. Well, well they're doing the uh, Cobra Katai um, sort of memes with him and, nice. and, and doing that, which I kind of like. Um, he had a great goal. It was off a rebound. So basically, this is what we saw in the video. We saw a pass from Perry Kitchen out of traffic up to Sasha Kleschen. Sasha Kleschen out of traffic into space for uh, Christian Pavone. Christian Pavone up the left-hand side, cutting inside Hard right-footed shot, saved by the Vancouver Whitecaps. The rebound bounces out to the left side of the box, and Katai roofs it 
across the oh my goal. God, are we in the playoffs yet? Yeah, I know, right? It's 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 too much fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's 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 uh, it was fun to sort of watch and and put that together. So um, that's good. The fact the Galaxy scored four goals in this, and by the way, the other goal scorer that we know of is Ethan Zubak in that second forty-five. It looks like Efrain Alvarez was in there and that he was doing that. So you had um, are you sure no one else scored a goal. Um, I see. I mean, this is where it, this. So let's get into the conspiracy theories. Um, one of the reasons that it was probably shut down is because it's likely that jo- that uh, Chicharito Javier Hernandez was playing in this game. Um, he's not supposed to be because it's a it's a violation of the visa. Um, that's one of the things. There were certainly pictures that got sent out by somebody who was there that shouldn't have been sending out pictures that showed that um, that he was playing. Now. Uh, the Galaxy did a really good job, however, because all of those players were playing without numbers, which was hysterical. Not one jersey had a number on it, so I can't tell you that it was Javier Hernandez out there. Couldn't tell you at all. So, um, you know, that's sort of where you're sitting in. This is in like all an this. episode of The X Files. It, it is crazy. I mean, that's why. Listen, that's that's probably why the media wasn't let in. That's I mean, that's not even a stretch to imagine that. So um, that's just something that we have to sort of sit there and say, okay, whatever. It is what it is. And by the way, I, I think some people. People actually told me they're like, "Hey, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that because you're going to get people in trouble." I'm like, "I'm not the pro- I'm not the one who's doing this." Oh, come on! Yeah, I please. know, right? It's um, out there in the public domain already. It's not like you're delivering news that you shouldn't be. It, please, it, I'm. If if it's if anybody gets in trouble, it's it's not me. All right, because no. I, that's not how that it works. Should be Larry. Yeah, it's we'll blame Larry. That's perfect. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so this is this is uh, it, it's been really interesting to sort of see uh, this team develop. But a, a team, a Galaxy team, that, that one of their biggest questions. They have two big questions, right? There mm-hmm. is how are you going to stop goals and how are you going to score goals. I mean, those are pretty big soccer questions. Mm-hmm. Whenever we look at them, scores four goals in their first scrimmage. Mm-hmm. Um, and why it, is everyone worried about them scoring goals? I well because I know we were so reliant. We I say that. Lucy. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I know the Galaxy were very reliant on Zlatan last season, Josh, but. This season, you know, they were reliant on Zlatan and other players do need to step up and get more goals. But you're replacing, I dare I say, and I mean this respectfully, like for like in terms of what Chicharito has output in his career. Maybe not of late, but that's because he's been in bad situations Mm -hmm. and not suited to the way he plays. Yeah. But I don't know why everyone's panicking about where the goals are going to come from. I wouldn't. I mean, we, we've sort of talked all along that we think that the goals in general will be just fine just because the Galaxy team fits more around Chicharito than they did around Zlatan. And the speed of which they're going to play is going to be very different. That all that all means something, too. So um, for a team to go out and score four goals in a preseason mm-hmm. is great. And for a team that only allowed one goal mm-hmm. in the preseason is great. So you look at it, Galaxy won 0 one in the preseason. Mm-hmm. That, hey, chalk that one up. I know no, I know we didn't see much of this game. I know we didn't have much updates. By the way, you wouldn't have seen much of this game even if they would have let media into it. There right, would have right. been tweet updates. You wouldn't know all the goal scorers, um, guarantee you. And the fact that there are two goals that are missing there yeah. and that they haven't shown video of sort of indicates at least something happened. Uh, happened. He- here's what needs to happen, though, Josh. One thing real quick before we move on. Move on. I think as long as LA Galaxy aren't the Liverpool before the good Liverpool, you know how they they went and got Salah, they went and got Firmino, they built their front three, they built from the front going backwards. Um, I hope you might Arsenal are doing that a little bit with like shoring up the defence. So are, are LA Galaxy going to have to be a team again where they have to score four to win a game because they're going to let in three? So that's the biggest question is going to be what does that defense look like this season? Because going forward, I'm really not worried about this team. Well, let's uh, let's just, you know, real quickly, you can go over the defenders that are there and you'll notice that there's a large contingent of returners on the defense and whether that's good or bad. I mean, mm-hmm. Daniel Starris is a returner there. Um, you know, Rolf Felcher is a returner there. Julian Araujo is a returner there. People Gonzalez is a returner there. Uh, the only guy who's kind of new right now, there are two guys. Actually, they'll end up being three. We'll talk about mm-hmm. the one that just got added as right. well. Um, but you have you know Danny Acosta who comes in and can play the backup left back role mm-hmm. so he's there uh, and then you have Emiliano and Sua who certainly has the pedigree to be excellent in Major League Soccer whether he will be excellent in Major League Soccer is is always the and question. And a good distributor of the ball which is very important. And so. seems to be able to run up and down the sidelines right. like as you would expect in a, a, a Guillermo Barrescoloto offense mm-hmm. and defense uh, sort of scheme so um, you're going to be relying a lot on him to sort of see uh, where he's coming from but again um, there's not much change there but the the fact they only let in one goal against a, I will say, I don't consider the Whitecaps, you know, uh, going to be probably a favorite this year. Um, but, you know, regardless of the fact, that's a step forward. 
Uh, we say this every preseason, and so I want to get it out of the way now. The preseason means absolutely nothing until it means something. And yeah. you don't know if it means something until about three quarters of the way through the absolutely. season. So Where you can look back and see the signs. Right. And you're like, oh, right. but a, a lot of times what happens in the preseason is there's a bunch of bad things that get corrected. And then you don't see those signs ever again through the rest of the season. So it's always tough to, to sort of gauge these things. But I think if you're a Galaxy fan, you say four to one win. Thank you. And you move on and you and you say, OK, hopefully that means nobody got injured. Everything's fine. Um, and we move on from there. So is everyone fine? We'll get to Jonathan Dos Santos. Fine. Yeah, I know. Good. Um, let's talk about the addition the LA Galaxy did announce. And that was the signing of defender Nick Depuy um, or Depoy, depending, I guess, on how you say it, because I've heard it 13 different ways. And there was no pronunciation guide on the press release because I really I really was trying to find out. Uh, but anyway, 25 years old. He's a center back. Uh, he was named the 2019 LA Galaxy. 2 Defender of the Year. He played 1,901 minutes and 26 games played. 21 games started for Los Dos. Uh, originally, by the way, signed with the Montreal Impact in 2017 and selected with the 19th pick in the MLS Super Draft. He got five appearances and one start with Montreal. Went on loan to Ottawa Fury FC. Came back. Eventually mm-hmm. landed with LA Galaxy 2. Um, so there's this is a guy who's in Irvine, so an Orange County guy. Uh, he, takes must over. Go, he must go to Shirley's Bagels for he, for, for breakfast wouldn't you think so i mean at, i know people are gonna be like what is that's an orange county thing but no um yeah i mean he replaces dave romney who was our last orange county guy so right. you know, we got another orange county guy on the on on the podcast and which he's, means he's six foot five I mean, he's a big boy he's a big boy and he's not just six foot five lean and skinny he's got muscle on him like you don't want to be bumping into him right i've got some serious intel on him yes i know tell me tell me about this okay so my friend um great guy michael Elias. uh he's a fellow greek and he's the head coach of the Ventura County Fusion. And some of you may have, may know of the Ventura County Fusion. They're a great, uh, great squad. They're out in the valley. They've done some amazing things. Uh, they play some of the top teams, not only from, from here, but in Europe as well during off season as well. So he was, uh, Mike was telling me, uh, obviously Dupuy went, went to Ventura County. Um, he said they recruited him from UC, um, SB. They were initially impressed with his size and his dominance on the field. Uh, Mike said he only played a handful of games, and I'm reading what he wrote to me earlier today. Uh, However, within that time, I remember he was a quiet, laid-back fella. I like that he had a good presence on the field and dominated in the air. He's got good feet and he's calm under pressure. He started with us as a central defender, but later showed certain qualities to play up front, which is an interesting point that you made. Um, But for Mike, he was always a defensive player. Uh, he set his goal to become a pro. He attracted a lot of attention. Uh, they were really super happy with his development. They enjoyed the time that they worked with him and said that he was, you know, a, a really great guy. And and I think that you know they've played, they've they've helped um, bring out, bring on um, some other players that have gone on to play for LA Galaxy, including Daniel Steres and and Zardes and Brian Rowe as well. So thank you, Michael, for taking the time to kind of chat with the corner of the Galaxy crew today and good luck to Ventura County Fusion with everything they've got going forward but very impressive um, you know report from someone who worked directly with him yeah he seems uh, again I think he has the physicality his his age certainly lends him to be able to handle Major League Soccer at 25 years old I mean we always talk about in you know US soccer the sort of the age curve is a little bit later mm-hmm. um, this seems like a kid who could come out there and you know actually get some backup minutes mm-hmm. um, he played in Leagues Cup uh, if everybody remembers he was in the 18 for the match against the the, uh, the Jolos of Tijuana um, but he did not uh, play in that game and then he started and played all 90 minutes versus Cruz Azul in the League's Cup uh, last year so you did see some of him Um, this seemed like one of those things that was going to happen it seemed like this is good depth in terms of defense I do not believe this means the LA Galaxy are done signing central defenders I still Mm -hmm. think they could go out and get somebody on the international market to come back and be a, a a uh, a almost starter. It's like somebody who's going to vie for starting minutes, right. maybe like they did last year with people Gonzalez already having Diego Polenta. Um, so having said all of that, uh, you know, you can sort of put him in, and then you talk about sort of his height and his ability to play up. Fr- he can play up front. I mean, that's it's and not. He something- seems to have the right character and personality and demeanor for a professional footballer, which. You know, I think that's what Mike was saying to me kind of uh, off the record too. Like he seems like a really good kid. So, and also the versatility that he brings to the team. Is he going to be that kind of player that can step in? I'm not saying up front if someone gets injured, but is he, if he can do, if he can play those dual roles, is he going to be someone that comes in really handy should the team come into injury worries 
as the season goes on. Yeah, a good depth piece. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's really what this is. Great depth signing. Uh, something that, you know, was uh, was a, a good move, I think, from Dennis Teclosa. Um, and when we look at rosters and sort of how they're all put together right now, uh, I believe the LA Galaxy are at 23 total players now. Um, if my roster is correct. Oh, no, I'm still at 22. I keep wanting to add one, but I had to take Jorgen Shelvick off there. Uh, I'm um, trying to look at which blue blue piece blue, of paper. No, yeah, don't worry. I didn't give you that one. Okay, fine. I just I just have st- stacks of paper <laughs> over here that are that are for me as well. Um, yeah, 22 players right now. Uh, the Galaxy sit 8 of 8 internationals with the loan out of Jorgen Shelvick, which mm-hmm. we talked about on Monday. Uh, you can go back and listen to that podcast and talk about that. So the Galaxy currently roster compliant with international slots, but I expect that they still have the ability to add one or possibly two more internationals. Where do you think the team is still lacking then? Striker. I think that they need a backup striker to Javier Hernandez, and they need somebody who is experienced enough to be able to score goals. Uh Um, And then I also think that there's still a defensive signing in there in terms of maybe probably another center back quite honestly. Um, You don't think that the the availability going forward, you don't think anyone can step into the Chicharito role with like Pavon... Can he do? Yes, can... he can. So Pavon Katai can also play. I mean, right. so when you look at how you can rotate things, uh, one of the most important pieces this year is going to be Sebastian Lejet, who can play in the middle yes. and play on the outside, and that can move people into the top as well. So yeah. that rotation is there. That's why I think the midfield is kind of set because with um, Lejet being able to slot swing either side, Sophie, it makes sense that he could fill in to those totally. other places. And he, his fitness and, and Dos Santos is going to be very important this season. That midfield is going to be really important. Yeah. He, oh, he, hugely important. Um, so let's talk about him real Put quick. Put everyone out of their yeah, misery. I they're know. dying. They're I know. Dying. They're, they're going. Um, I, I don't have anything great. I'm actually going to check. Let's see. As we're recording this podcast, I'm going to check my phone right now just to make sure I didn't get a text message while we were recording. And the answer is... Um, no, I haven't got it. Okay, so I reached out to the LA Galaxy whenever Jonathan Dos Santos posted a picture of himself, maybe at a hospital, maybe at a doctor's office. We don't know. Maybe his backyard. Yeah, maybe his backyard. It could have been. I mean, he could be just messing with us, and it's kind of fun. Um, but he posted a picture on his Instagram story. It was basically of his left hand and his right hand, and he was filling out paperwork of some sort that talked about the patient's signature. I don't want to post that. I have the photo. I don't want to post it on uh, on any of the, the, the video podcasts or anything because, you know, there's just too much information on there. I'm not going to I'm not going to get into that. He put it out there. So he technically, you know, there's no HIPAA violations here. Uh, I know some people are like, it's a HIPAA violation. He put it out there, not me. Um, so he, he has it. But anyway, um, he also had a patient wristband. Like if you go into a hospital and you get a patient wristband, like you're being admitted. Um, did a did lot we of get times, his address from that at all? We did, but it was the uh, it was the stadium address, and he even joked around on it a little bit. He seems like he's in okay spirits with it. Um, people have sort of looked into, you know, tried to like look at some of the information and figure stuff out. Uh, I was told by the LA Galaxy that they were checking on it. Um, the the last text messages I have is they're still waiting on word of what it is and what's mm-hmm. going on. So that that we have incomplete information. I will tell you this that I would check, you know, on Twitter tomorrow on a Friday. Uh, I'm guessing that somebody will have figured it out by then. Um, I'm told that he already had something minor that he was that was limiting him a little bit in preseason so there was already a knock of some sort that he had that was limiting his availability to sort of play and train and do some things although we've seen him in a bunch of videos we've seen him in stuff so it's not completely limited that so I, but they, the the uh, the person I talked to at the club said that they were unsure whether or not the two were related um, in this particular case, whether the the visit that he was at was related to this minor incident, maybe mm. that got more major. Um, but bottom line is that there is something going on with Jonathan Dos Santos. Um, it could end, turn out to be nothing. Remember, this is a guy who broke his nose. Um, and so maybe it's just pain management with the nose. Uh, maybe it's something like that because I think he had I think he had surgery on it or, or he had some corrective measure on it that in the can, And that was late. That was after the fact, wasn't it? Yeah, it was because he didn't realize it was broken until a, a long way down the road. So it was a couple months down the road that you didn't realize his nose was broken. So. All I have to say to Galaxy Nation is this. Uh, Jonathan was not on the interview schedule at MLS Media Day, but he was there to take pictures in the new kit. And uh, we ran into him, a couple of us... Um, ran into him in the hallway and when he saw us he was very like hey almost like where you guys been yep and we're like hey can we just get the new season started and i would like to report that he looked great yeah it didn't look like he had any type of limp injury uh he wasn't sad he was very happy he was raring to go for the new season he was ready to kick off so whatever is going on 
perhaps it's just uh, management, like you said, or and precautionary in some ways. Yeah, I mean, uh, he that... looks so good when when I saw him literally three weeks ago. He looked amazing. He he is a guy who has, uh, as you said, has sort of played his way into being just this uh, ultimate LA Galaxy player. Um, and I I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here when I said I, we fully expect him to be captain this year. Um, he should be the captain. He should be the captain. Um, lots of people could be vice captains after that, but the captain is Jonathan he has Dos Santos. To be the captain. Yeah, um, that's, he won me over. Yeah, oh, yeah, because you you, you were remember you, me you yes, re- I remember you were on this show and you said I don't I, I think he's overrated the whole deal. Yeah, and then what happened? He, he won he won me he over. He won you over, so that's how you go. But I mean, he was fantastic last season. He really was. He led by example. He was so good, and he really deserves the captain's armband. And I know that there's going to be this reaction to Vela's the captain of LAFC so Chicharito has to be the captain of LA Galaxy but Dos Santos is just as you know beloved well you know Chicharito's kind of here and and then there's everybody else but right. he he he's earned it I think and I think he'd take it on this season too don't you yeah oh in yeah a different way oh yeah I, I think that he has become a lead he was kind of the quiet guy whenever Gio was on mm-hmm. the on the team but he has become really sort of almost the heart and soul how Jonathan plays the LA Galaxy play uh from him playing in that central midfield role as well and I think he's going to be more of you know have to be more offensive this year with the three that are probably going to be playing in the midfield right. not the five that I they're think he'll play. like that oh I think he will too I yeah. think he needs to get forward um, I think he'll relish that. Should it should be it should be a fun thing to watch. I think that his development. I, we we talked on Monday. Kevin and I talked on Monday about people who are going to be pivotal for the LA Galaxy. Um, and we talked about Julian Araujo and sort of his development and how pivotal that may be for the LA Galaxy. We talked about Sebastian Legette and how pivotal his ability yeah. to stay healthy, to to uh, take a step forward and be sort of the player that everybody thinks he can be and be able to play multiple positions. Jonathan Dos Santos is right there in terms of you know keys to the LA Galaxy having success. If Jonathan Dos Santos has another year like he had last year, the LA Galaxy should be a good team. He there better not be anything wrong with him. Well, I no, mean, no, seriously. Right now, it seems like it's definitely something. Um, we don't know what it is. I know people are speculating that there's surgery, and uh, we'll see. I mean, you know, and surgery also means sometimes that you have a splinter and that they have to like take it out. I mean, so like, <laughs> there's so many varying degrees of all this stuff. So uh, again, if this, if it's anything, and you hope it's not major. If it's anything, it's early enough in the preseason right now that you hope the LA Galaxy can sort of, you know, okay, cool. I'll tell you another thing. If there was one place where the LA Galaxy do have some backup, it's at that position with Perry Kitchen and Sasha Kleshin, but that's a lot to yes. be missing with Jonathan Dos Santos. Kleshin. Yes. We forgot about him because that signing came a little earlier mm-hmm. than most, but I actually think that he's going to bring some backup value and maybe not even just backup. Do you think he'll start? Sasha Kleshin? Yeah. I think he will be very valuable this year, actually. I think I don't know I do if he'll too. start. I don't know if he'll start. Uh, right now, in my mind, Corona's probably ahead of him just in the age mm-hmm. issue. But I don't think that there's anything stopping Sasha Kleshin from coming on in the second half of every game. Experience. And having that experience and yeah. being able to, And he played that role in Orlando and was able mm-hmm. to affect the outcomes of games. And I, I think that the Galaxy are sort of hoping that. Plus, he's home. He's a Huntington Beach guy. Yeah. He's home. He's playing in front of his family. I mean, those are big boosts. He's 34 years old. Which... This is the swan song for him. I think this, this is, is the shot. This yeah. is the one. And, and, yeah. s- and so I think that uh, he's going to be happy. So Sasha Kleshin really could be um, could be a- a- an interesting signing. It could be something that makes a difference this year. And that's what you're looking for, right? Mm-hmm. The difference makers and, and trying to figure that out. So, exactly. Um, a little bit more information. The LA Galaxy and the sleeve sponsor. Have you heard that MLS has allowed teams to have sleeve sponsors now? Yes. Okay, and this is this is in reaction to basically the the marketing LA. dollars that are out there. Didn't this start with LAFC last season? Uh, I don't know if they got a sleeve sponsor a hundred percent, but you may be I right. Remembers uh, this? I know Atlanta last... got one earlier this year, and right. that's what prompted people to ask sort of when are the LA Galaxy going to get theirs? I'm told that there is interest on both sides in terms of the LA Galaxy are going out to look for some, and people are contacting the LA Galaxy to be that sponsor, so they're shopping those right now to sort of figure out. I'm told nothing's close. Are we throwing our hat in the ring? Yeah, yeah corner. Of the galaxy sponsors the <laughs> on the sleeve that would that would be pretty cool. How cool! Would I don't that know be? if I have the. What would you think it costs? I Let's would have do a no Go idea. Fund me page. Fifty thousand, a million dollars, a million dollars, right? For the sleeve, a hundred grand. You think for the sleeve for the season? For the season. Hmm. Maybe. Well, hold on. We've got f- we, we stop stop. <laughs> uh, the LA Galaxy have five stars. Right. So it's going to cost a little bit more. It's, there's a premium on the, yeah. on the LA Galaxy. So it could be like five hundred grand, a hundred grand for each star. <sighs> 
Wow. Huh? Wow. That's could a lot we of, not? I don't think we could crowd fund that one. Let's do a whip round. <laughs> <laughs> whip round. How much money do you have in your pocket? I have zero dollars in cash right we'll now. Get everyone in chat that's, to give us some money. That's right. Everybody, drop a drop a ten dollar donation. No. Um. But anyway, well, so look, it makes sense. They've got to make the shirt is there, right? I mean, in in I hope it doesn't get. And I say this with respect. The Liga MX. The it's a bit too much, there's right? Too ma- there's, there's, there's too, too much. much sponsorship. Yeah, we don't on want it to look like NASCAR. Right. Well, right? I mean, if you look at the NBA, the NBA is doing sleep sponsors now, right? Yeah. So they're trying to open it up just enough so that way there's some sponsorships available. Um, but uh, anyway. Arsenal have Visit Rwanda yeah. <laughs> on their sleeve. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how many people yeah. want to go to Rwanda, Rwanda but, but they apparently do have it on there. their tourist uh, income has gone up a few million dollars since that has happened. See, that's a return on investment right there. ROI is strong. I mean, um, I think we should come up with some really good ideas for what the sleeve sponsor could be. Well, that's what everybody's like. Maybe Herbal Life will buy a second sponsorship on it. I'm like, you know, it's Pink, like Pink's hot dogs. It could be. I mean, In I and think. Out. In and Out would be a good In one. In and Out would be a great one. Um, I take Chipotle. I know there's some people who are still down on Chipotle, mm, but I'm, I'm in haven't on the Chipotle. Had Chipotle since the E. coli breakout. Well, don't worry. I mean, it's fine. With the cor- with the coronavirus out there, really, you're rolling the dice We're anytime all, you go yeah, outside absolutely. anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, so um, so the sleep sponsorship something is coming probably. I don't know if it'll happen this year. I don't know when it'll happen, but they they are shopping it, and I just wanted to sort of give everybody that sort of heads right. up. Right. Okay. All right. Now, Sophie, you specifically requested I did. this topic um, today. This this was all you. You said, "Hey, I want to talk about the kit and oh, the kit release." Yes. So I, uh, I I wanted to give you that option and and that opportunity to do that um so the la galaxy did officially release their kit i wasn't there were you there was, I was larry was, there they didn't invite us can you believe that nobody said nobody flew get, in our I private jet to new york no no nothing oh that's why we didn't get invited that's what it is that's what right. it was yeah okay um so anyway Fine. so they did a fashion show um this is the 25 forward sort of uh push for the 25th season of major league soccer and so they had a whole bunch of things uh the la galaxy were represented by mers uh, was there again? He was uh, he was out there representing the LA Galaxy as he has been. Um, and so, um, by the way, if he ever wants to come on this podcast, he's more than welcome to come. I doubt he listens to us, but if he does, you're more that the studio is open for you at any totally. time. Come on, and you could kick, kick Sophie out in a heartbeat. I mean, just. I would leave just so you could be here. Yeah, it's, somebody's saying chronic tacos. By the way, for the for the uh, for oh the oh my gosh, that would be a that's good one. a really good one, right? I love me some chronic tacos, that's, that's, so that's, especially at lunchtime. So see, so that's a good. One. Anyway, back to this. So. So what do you think of this? This is a do you 20... like the new kit? I will say I think it's compared to a bunch of the other ones. I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, I would say that the lack of of color in it is disappointing to me. I do like the little splashes of color and it's the fact too... that it's gray and white and just it's more monochrome than anything else. The only color you're seeing is the stars and the crest, which is also maybe that uh, that's a cool design. I've done that before where you have a black and white picture and uh-huh. you take one thing and you make it color. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't done that in Photoshop, right? So I get the the design element of it. <laughs> I think they I think they wanted the stars to shine. Yeah. I don't think they wanted too much fuss around the shirt. Uh, I have to say my favorite shirt, don't shoot me everybody. Right. Mine is the New York Red Bulls. Oh, the all black one? Oh yeah. That, Anything it, all black. The Inter Miami one too with the hint of pink. How come Any how, man who rocks pink? How is Inter Hello? Miami's primary kit not pink? Not super. The away kit is, isn't it? I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that pink, though. I think it's more black than pink, and their primary is white. Well, it's a hint of pink. It's a trim. It's a pink trim, right? So I think their away shirt is actually pink, the whole top. Okay. Okay. Right, but their home is going to be the black with the with the pink trim. So I really liked. I love the Red Bulls, and uh, I also loved uh, Minnesota's. I thought. I say love. I said like. I love the Red Bulls, and I loved into Miami. And I really dig Minnesota. And I think the Columbus crew, I think uh, it, there's a pattern here. I like everything that's black. <laughs> yeah, you, I think you that want... might be a Greek tragedy thing. I mean, I, you know, one of the, I would say one of the top rated LA Galaxy kits of all time is that black and gold kit that they had uh, way back before black and gold was popular here in Los Angeles for, for one reason or the other. But that black and gold kit for the LA Galaxy is still one of the best kits the LA Galaxy ever put out. Sexy. Very, it's very. The blue, I like the blue though as Blue's well. Blue's great. I like the blue. I like that the, was caught. I like the white again. With this, it's just uh, listen. I I really these always grow on me. 
I'm sure they look good in person, and so maybe mm-hmm. you, we'll get to see some of that, and you'll be like, oh, man, totally. these look really sharp whenever you see them. You know that Coldplay song, look at the stars, yes. look how they shine for you. It's like, let's put the five stars in front and center right. and just remind everybody as we move along this new journey. I, I will I say, that's where I will say we'll probably get a copyright violation because that sounded Uh-oh. like Chris Martin right there. That was, that was, was you. I, that, you were, that was basically that was, Chris Martin. That was, hello, that was Coldplay you. right here in the studio. That was amazing. It's the, it's the light. It's the new lights. It's the new lights. Yeah, we just yeah. we need to get a little. It's yeah. all. It was all yellow. I'll just change those <laughs> to over. We can we can we can make that happen. Um, anyway, so uh, Josh even has sunset lights. People. Oh, I that's... mean, I don't want to give away all of the treat early on before the season's even kicked off. I mean, my wife is a lucky lady, isn't she? And she I is. I mean, you know, totally. She, she's she's like whatever. You're a keeper. Yeah, I think so. I think so. She's yeah. like eh, keeper, loser, whatever. One of those things. <laughs> Um, as she's at home watching the baby, so I can uh, actually do podcasting. So she's she's a saint. We'll we'll, we'll talk nicely about her. Um, all right, are you? Re- <laughs> Let's see. I was gonna do There's it. Some really bad kits as well, by the way. There's some horrible kits. Sounders. I mean, jo- Jordan Morris is gonna look like a. Yeah, uh, I'll stop right there yeah, I mean, in that kit. He's just uh, that one's not a not a fan. I, I just think Nashville there's so many. lost the boat. I mean, some of the new teams as well, like an, a chance to make an impact. And They're... Chicago rebranded, and they still have that logo. And yeah. I, which, by the way, I'm the only one who likes the logo, and and everybody else is sort of like that's a horrible logo. I think it's fine. I so. don't mind the logo. It's NYFC's fine. NYFC's boring too. There's, yeah, I think LA Galaxy will stand out and um, shiny and bright and white. With those stars, yeah, there there are some there are some really good ones and really bad ones. I think the LA Galaxy sit more towards the top of good than than bad. They're so. in like fourth or fifth spot, that, right? That's there. that's fine with yeah. me. You know, uh, I I saw what some of the others could be, and I'm glad uh, that the Galaxy kits aren't that way. So, um, yeah, so that's what we have with the kits now. Um, before we get to CBA, because literally I know I'm going to spend 20 minutes talking about the CBA. So I just I want to give everybody a chance to get all the other information so that way they don't have to listen to the CBA part if they don't want to. Um, one of the Galaxy Alumni News updates is this is a crazy one, Sophie. It just I just saw it, too. Um, there's no way for me to possibly, you know, confirm this. But Pete Vianis, uh, former L.A. Galaxy, uh, what, director, um, you know, a front office man, former player, uh-huh. has joined... Uh, Shiza Huang Everbright as a technical du- uh, director, and Everbright is in the Chinese Super League, so he's joining the Chinese Super League at as a technical time. director um, right now, as, it, we're, as we're speaking, apparently. That, so, maybe that's why the coronavirus... I was going to say it, but somebody already made that joke, and I... I mean, I'm, I'm sure they did. I'm not... Uh, it's, it's a good joke. Well, good for him. If he's happy and he's earning good money, then there you go. kudos. So, and so Pete's at the Chinese luck. Super League. There he is. Um, so that's there as well. Which has been suspended, by the way. They su- Oh, yeah, because because of the coronavirus yes. outbreak. Yes, yes that's always... Uh, that's. A, I heard uh, Teslas are going to be suspended. I, uh, let's see. Um, they, they aren't producing Teslas. They aren't producing the Oculus Rift There's from Facebook. Facebook, there's produced. not being produced right now. It's pretty much shut, shut down. So, in fact, if you wanted to order new lights, it's a good job <laughs> we, that you got them in when you when did. We did. That's <laughs> probably true. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about the CBA. Okay. Um, this is all you right here. Yeah, and, and I'm going to jump in with some. questions. You jump in with questions, and we will attempt to uh, because to this do has our been best. a long time coming. This, I mean, this so. has this. This is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm surprised it got done as early as it did. Mm-hmm. I expected there to have to be a lot more pressure. Right? We even talked last week. Whenever they extended, it, that was either a good sign or a bad sign. Um, it ended up being a good sign, and you know, there were reports earlier this week that things were going really well, and that it looked like there might be a deal on the horizon. And then, you know, I come into the office and at eight o'clock, there's press releases sent out that they've reached an agreement. Now, uh, there's something to understand. Nobody has. Uh, ratified this, right? So nobody has accepted this. This is the proposed, and it's probably likely that everybody agreed at the negotiating table, and now they take it back to the MLS Board of Governors, which and they take it, it back to public. the players. Yeah, which is by, why it became public, okay. right? And it's been really quiet. We haven't heard a bunch about mm-hmm. this. Uh, the only thing we really heard was that it was good, and one of the indicators that everything was going good is the fact that we didn't hear a lot. And usually, whenever it's going bad, people start talking. Right. And so, you know, same thing with the sports teams, by the way. If your team is really, really bad and people start blaming each other, they want to talk about it, and <laughs> then and you can't right. shut them up. Um, that's how it goes. So, uh, there's a bunch of things that got tweaked in here. And so, this CBA now covers from 2020 to 2024. That's five years, by the way. Count 2020 mm-hmm. as a year boys and girls who are trying to do math in their heads saying that's only four years yeah, numbers. 2020 is a year 2021 2022 2023 2024 that's five years okay five-year agreement uh the salary cap itself in total spend 
goes from $8.49 million to $11.643 million by the end of the deal. All right, this is important to sort of look at and understand in terms of where the salary is going and how much the salary is going to affect. Uh, the salary budget in 2019, just the, the salary cap itself, we call the salary budget and salary cap mm -hmm. the same thing, okay? Uh, the salary cap in 2019 was $4.24 million. In 2020, it goes up to $4.9 million. Uh, we can sort of look at these things in terms of how they're how they're sussed out in the different categories that they're in. So let's try to do that real quick. Um, and if you're listening on the podcast, I will do the best I can to explain the chart that I'm putting up on the YouTube stream. Um, so I, I did do some charts and I did put some stuff together so that way we could sort of understand this. Um, what you need to know and the most important things is that the available to spend on the roster, how much money are you able to spend on the roster? I told you that in 2019, that number was $8.49 million. In 2020, that number is $9.225 million. Uh, that goes all the way until uh, 2024 when it's $11.643 million to be able to spend and that accounts for salary budget, general allocation money, discretionary TAM, okay. and all of that equals your but total. But not DP. Not DPs. DPs are outside of this. And Correct. so there are going to be some categories here that we talk about that are outside of the spending. Mm -hmm. um, here's a fun thing. You know targeted allocation money? Yes. Did you know it died today? Okay, so what's the DTAM about then? So so there was targeted allocation money, which was the TAM, Correct. and then there was the discretionary targeted allocation money. And teams were given $1.2 million in targeted allocation money every year for the last couple of years. Okay? Yes. Now, what has happened today is, and whenever they ratify this agreement, is that TAM dies. Okay, Tam Where's goes the away. money gone? That money gets converted into general allocation money, which means that it's not restricted on how so you it's spend jam it. jam now, not Tam? It's, j it's jam and not Tam. Okay, so the jam Was is... Was it gam or jam? I've always done um, jam because it's jam. general allocation yeah, money. Okay. Eric disagrees and calls it gam. And we have this argument all the time, which I'm glad he's not here today because this would have been most of it would be us arguing yes. about what it is. So anyway, uh, the jam... So you're converting $1.2 million in TAM to general allocation money. So it's now JAM. What that means, Sophie, is that the restrictions that were placed on targeted allocation money are no longer there. You can spend that JAM across the whole roster. So basically the rules of engagement with that particular budget changed. Yes, and their restrictions have been lifted. lifted. Yeah, and this was the big win for the for the players. They were they said that right. up to I think up to sixty percent of some, or maybe it was forty percent of the money was restricted in terms of it couldn't just be applied to anybody. The guy at the end of the of the row here at the end of the bench didn't get any of that targeted allocation money because that TAM was basically used just to bring in international players. Right. And so you you like the the normal everyday guys like well where's that money? Why can't I have it? So what MLS said is we'll take that one point two million dollars, we'll convert it into general allocation money. And so now it can be spread across anywhere you want. Okay. And that also helps because it doesn't really affect anything. If you signed a player with TAM, you just use the same amount of jam. And have, now. have the LA Galaxy used those available funds thus who, far? Who knows? I we mean, don't know. We don't okay. know. Sebastian Legette is was signed using TAM. And right. so you would expect that he's not a TAM player anymore. He's actually just a player who's making over the salary cap and is being bought down by general allocation money. Okay. Okay. So that's that's what we hear. Now, what hasn't died is discretionary TAM. Now, there was $2.8 million uh, for the last couple seasons that was allocated for teams to use. Right. Now, at their discretion. At their discretion. You didn't have right. to spend it. Okay. We Let's 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 clarify. Salary budget. So your, your salary cap, that $4.9 million in 2020, right. you have to spend. General allocation money, mandatory spend. You have to spend all of that money. Discretionary TAM, up to you if you want to spend it or not. Okay, so that's the sort of the the difference that we have. And designated players, those are those are um, those are optional. You don't have to right. buy buy Correct. designated players. Um, so that's where you're you're going with this stuff. So um, the discretionary TAM is going to be reduced, and this is the thing. So as discretionary TAM is reduced over these five years in the CBA, uh, that amount of money is put into general allocation money. So as it's reduced, it slides over. Now, I actually did the differences and trying to figure out if they were actually like for like, and it doesn't show that to me. Um, they aren't like for like switches, but I don't know what the increases are, so I can't really tell you whether or not they're really like for like. Right. Um, but what I can tell you is that the increased amount of spending from 2019 uh, to 2024, whenever they, they do, the total spend and increase per year is $3.1 million. So the per year? No, total. total. So really, if you're looking at right. what the owners are spending right now, 
and what they're doing, and there's some other things in here where they're certainly spending more money, so this isn't a huge deal, but the total increase in spending on the salary budget and discretionary TAM is $3.153 million. So that's it. Over these next five years, that's the, the really as high as the salary cap and spending budgets are going to get is okay. about uh, that. So that, by the way, that pushes the salary cap, as we said, um, in 2024 to $6.425 million uh, in terms of salary cap, three, uh, just a little over $3 million in general allocation money, still $2.1 million in, in discretionary TAM. Right. And that means that your your total roster spend on that budget can be up to eleven point six four three million dollars, excluding designated players, um, and all that fun stuff. So the total budget of a team could be eleven. You're saying like around eleven, but a that doesn't include the three DP slots. Exactly, exactly. So um, those are, those are the important things to say. I'll tell you this. Are you following everyone? Uh, yeah, I know everybody's like, oh, but I can't, I can't, I can't handle it. Um, designated players stay exactly the same in terms of that you're allowed to sign three. Correct. Now those players have a salary charge or a budget charge that still get charges, and I think it was five hundred and thirty thousand dollars last year. I'm not sure if that charge has changed, but okay. that's what it is against that salary cap, right? So if you have three, you end up spending, spending that three times. Um, so that's still the same. Here's the change, and it's a big change. Um, the Every team has a right to sign three designated players, but starting with the CBA, the league has the right to limit the third designated player that you sign to a maximum TAM salary if that player is over 23 years old whenever they're signed. So they're trying to... Why the league getting involved in that? So what they're trying to do is here, and there's a couple initiatives that evol involved here. There's this, uh, there's this designated player switch that, that shows basically that if a player is over 23 years old, that he can only make a maximum of, of $1.625 million per year, um, according to the TAM numbers for 2020. Um, and then they also have this initiative called the 22 initiative, which we don't have a bunch of details about that says that player, that teams may be able to sign up to three players who are 22 years and younger and have them possibly exempt from the budget charge or at a reduced budget charge. So the idea behind both of these, Sophie, is they're trying to get younger because they're trying to go in here and they're trying to be the selling league that now has gained some momentum. Right. And is this also designated to help smaller markets? I, I would imagine that there are certainly some owners who are not, who don't want to have three designated players and therefore, you know, want to see that, you know, that they're going to restrict that third one. It, I mean, I'll tell you right now, the LA Galaxy as it's constituted, unless Alexander Katai makes $1.625 million or less, right. as they're constituted right now, would not be in compliance with this rule. Let me ask you something. Let's say Inter Miami, who have been reported to be going after Cavani, right? right? Mm -hmm. What's the... what's Can he earn... Let's just say Inter Miami choose to break the bank. They can't because of all these rules. It's not like Europe, right? I mean... So could they pay him $12 million a year if they wanted to? Yes. Yeah, I mean, a designated player salary technically has no limit as There's long no as limit. it's one of these first two slots. Here's, here's Are the league worried that sets a precedent for, like, why why restrict the third spot? Like, uh, why do that the, when I, you're trying to attract top players to the league? I don't I don't understand that. Yeah, you, you don't. The, the idea here is that they want to get younger on the designated players, and I'm sure it's some of the owners who don't want to spend as much money as well. Younger Sophie. from Europe or younger from here? Because anywhere. It doesn't matter. I mean, that's not that's not all right. right. That's not that's not a thing that you, you can say. Oh well, where are they from? It doesn't matter. Um, like I said, the Galaxy don't comply with this, and they're probably not going to need to uh -huh. um, for the length of the contracts that they have now, because basically this seems like an optional thing that MLS can determine when they. It says basically they have the right to enforce uh -huh. this. It doesn't say that they're going to enforce this. I would imagine that as designated players um, sign. Um, that they'll start enforcing this down the road as as contracts expire. But here's the thing: can you sign a guy who's under 23 years old, and so you can pay him as much money as you want? Because that's the rule. If he's under 23, you can spend you can pay him 30 million dollars as the third designated player. It doesn't matter. You could do that. But next year, does that mean that he has to take you know less money because he's 24, or is it through the life of the contract? So could you sign a 23 year old, pay him as much money as you wanted to, and whenever he's 28, because you gave him a five year contract or something like that, you know, does that make sense? Um, this is all about combating the um, retirement league yeah. notion, and, and also right? and also building up the selling league, right? right. I mean, the selling part of that is 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 a big deal. 
Um, so I, I think those are the things that we sort of have to to look at when we're looking at this. I d- listen. I think if you're worried about the LA Galaxy, you look at who they have in the front office right now. And Dennis DeClosa, are you telling me Dennis DeClosa can't find a superstar at 22 years old that's going to go out there and and tear things up? I feel like that there's probably a pretty good chance that he can do that. So I think if you're looking for the Galaxy in the future, I'm not necessarily concerned. No. Um, I do. I don't like this rule. I don't. I don't think it's necessary. I think that it's definitely playing to some of the the lower denominator teams that don't want to spend the money. It's a little controlling, to be honest. Yeah, and and, and you know you're trying to force. I, you're trying to force this. And like I said, there's this other initiative that's called the 22 initiative right. that we have no details about because it says that they'll talk about it in 2021. Um, and that initiative is talking about bringing players 22 and younger onto teams and having either a reduced budget charge or maybe even no budget charge. So they're like free. They're outside the salary cap. Interesting. So, I mean, talk about developing players and that type of thing. It's, it's an it's interesting It's about protecting move. homegrown players too. Right? Well, I mean, homegrowns are already exempt from the salary cap up to a certain point. Right. So, I mean, what does that mean with the 22? The 22 thing seems like it's more like international players you're bringing in. This is definitely a move to try to stop the chatter about this be, being in retirement league and, and players coming here on massive salaries. And, I yes. mean, you, can still ha- you still have two players who you're going to pay as much money as you want. Right. Um, so that's still available, just that third DP. And even if you look at the LA Galaxy and how they've had those, their third DP is usually a guy like Roman Alessandrini who's not making, you know, $10 million yeah. or something. He's making, you know, one point, or he was almost making $2 million, $1.9. Um, so now you're saying that basically that person can only make $1.6 in this year. Um, so that's that's sort of where this this sits. Um, I want to tell everybody also, uh, that we always had the TAM range of like $1.5 million was the ceiling on that. That's gone up a little bit. So the discretionary TAM range now is from $612,500, which is the max budget charge of a player. Okay, that's whenever we talk about how you can have you can pay somebody a maximum amount without okay. them being a designated player or needing or yes. being a D TAM player. Um, so that's a six hundred and twelve thousand five hundred, and then they add a million dollars to that, and so the upper limit of that is one point six one two five. So are players better off with this new stuff? Yeah, um, and there is, and let's get to some of the reasons why they won. If you're okay. looking at who won this CBA, right. you're gonna say the players won. Now, I've already told you where I think the owners won, which is probably in the DP rule, and it's probably in the overall salary spend. Right. Um, but the players also run, won a whole bunch as well. We talk about charter flights. Um, charter flights were one of the huge things that the players were trying to go for, and we now know that uh, yes, I, I, you, you don't even have to do. You don't even have to hold up the slide. I can actually put it up the, as well. He yeah. Has the slide. Um, um, so if you look at charter flights in 2020, uh, teams are mandated slash required to take in the regular season um, eight of these chartered legs. Is that right? Two, four, six, eight. Two, right? four, six, six, eight planes you oh, have yes. on okay, this good. blue sheet. Uh, eight segments in 2020. Um, eight segments in 2020. That means if you're going to a game, more than likely it's one segment there and one segment back. Wait, so that, give give the give them uh, what what do you mean by segment? Explain so it's, that. It's, it's even basically I didn't... it's basically a flight. Like if you okay. think about if if, so if if we're going to play in uh, Orlando, yes, right. You you should be able to go nonstop, right? I mean, the Galaxy can charter a plane to right. Orlando, and that shouldn't be an issue, and they'll get it. So they should be able to go to LAX to Orlando, and Orlando back to LAX is right. two segments. All right now, if you had to stop in Texas, then that would be two segments there and two segments back. So that's so you're using some of your coupons right there. You are basically. So w- what happens here is though these are now mandated charter flights, which they were not before, right? Teams were sort of discretion in whether or not they used it, which meant again the cheap teams sort of were like, eh, we're not going to use them. Uh, right. These are mandated legs now. So uh, if you're the LA Galaxy, you have to take during the regular season. Uh, this is not counting playoffs. This is not counting anything else. During the regular season, you have to take uh, these eight segments in 2020, and then it's 10 segments in 21, uh, 12 segments in 22. 14 segments in 23, eventually topping out at 16 segments, which, by the way, is eight away games, which is almost more than more than half the away games, 16, 17, almost half of the away games um, in 2024 are mandated, um, you know, charter flights. Charter flights. Yeah. Which and then is, the others are as as they've been as used they've to. been commercial. Um, so, so you're going to see that. But the other thing this also adds is mandatory charter flights for the MLS Cup playoffs mandatory that and a hundred percent that should be the case and that's outside of these so if you make the playoffs you're on charter flights now um that's that's how it works and concacaf champions league if you're in the ccl and you're traveling internationally 
mandated charter flight. Yes. So And those are outside of these segments as well. So the players won big on that. They got increased 401k contributions. They got increased travel per diem, which is something that they were they were looking at. Increased moving stipends and benefits. Uh, benefits extensions for veteran players as well. So um, a bunch of things that they That's won good here. stuff. Here's, here's a big one. And people are going to jump up and down, and I'm not sure how much this is going to play. But they also agreed to media revenue sharing with the league. Okay, so this means that... Likeness? At, at, well, it basically means the new media deals that they're going to be signing, uh -huh. uh, probably the new television deals and all the stuff that are coming up, I think in 2023, um, whenever they sign those, that they will get a share of that revenue, a 25% share. However, when you say share of the revenue, the team's that, that, portion that, that of the that league, revenue. That the league is making, they'll okay. then share that with the owners in an equal amount, and then that will go into salaries. Okay. So they'll actually be able to increase the salary cap or it'll be general allocation money or however they do it, but they're going to increase the spending on that. However, there's a huge giant caveat on this. The for formula for this states that they will get 25% of the revenue after you compare that revenue to 2022. So 2022, whatever they made on media, uh, let's say they made $100 million in, this is just for easy math. Right. Sake, okay. $100 million in 2022. The rule is that they are allowed 25% after the first $100 million of increased revenue. So if you look at 2022 as $100 million, in 2023, you'd have to make $200 million before they would then get 25% of that revenue. So sharing. that comes with an asterisk. A, a big one. And we don't know how yeah. much that's going to affect anything. But they're going to hype that and they're going to talk about cheeky, that. A bit cheeky, isn't it? That's it, a bit cheeky. I mean, again, Why offer it if you're not really going to give it? The owners are keeping their $100 million increase. They're like, <laughs> hey, we, we earned that. And then we'll give you 25% of the rest. We'll give you a quarter of the rest. Which, again, it could be a lot of money. It might end up being no money because there won't be $100 million. Um, but it's something to sort of keep an eye on. And this is really for players that aren't Chicharito, who's not getting paid for likeness in his contract and some of the other bells and whistles that a DP player would get. You know, this is for some of the other players in, in right. the team that aren't earning as much, right? right? Yep. So, yep. Yeah. And, and yet there's a, there's a caveat, you know, uh, that's a bit cheeky, that one. Um, we talk about the max budget charge of 612-500. Um, that's up from 530 in 2019, so there's an increase there. The max budget charge in 2024 is $803,000. That's a significant increase whenever you start looking at what that means at the in, uh -huh. in sort of the, the bottom of things. Uh, the minimum salary senior roster was 70250 in 2019, and it will be $81,375 in 2020 and $109,000 in 2020. 2024. Um, so Come that's on. that's the minimum salary in 2024 for a senior roster player is over a hundred thousand dollars. You make more money than some of the LA Gal uh, than of some course. of these players. I we mean, all it, do. I mean, we, ma we make more money than. But back in the day, it was thirteen thousand dollars. I, I mean, you know, I remember when it was eight thousand dollars. So you're, you're seeing significant increases in all of this stuff. We talked about the three DP. So again, we talk about who won the CBA uh -huh. and what it means for the LA Galaxy. I would imagine the Galaxy operate almost exactly the same. The budget rules really didn't change that much, Sophie. They got a bump. Um, they'll operate the same. The three DPs probably doesn't come into effect until somebody runs out of contract next right. time. Um, and then the LA Galaxy can sort of figure out what they want to do with that. Um, because I think that right now it's sort of grandfathered in and that's not going to be an issue. Um, you know, this this is all... I think this is all really good news. Outside of the fact the salary cap doesn't increase all that much, um, it's, it, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not, you know, it can really be um, uh, something that, that lasts. You sort of have to say, okay, you know, what did the players certainly win on the charter flights as a certain win because those are tangible things. Right. Um, outside of that, free agency. That was one of the things I haven't the talked about. The league is making a ton of money now. Oh, they claim they're not making any money. Don't you know? Look at the expansions. Look what's going on. And look how much they're charging people just to get their foot in the door, Right. It's. I'm not saying it's. It, it. It. You know. The. The players deserve to be. To be paid. And people sometimes wonder why some of the younger American players go to Europe. Well, they also earn more when they do go uh, to Europe as well. So we got to take care of the players here. And the league is growing. And when they say the league is growing, yes, the teams are expanding. There's more cities now, building new stadiums that are spe soccer specific. But the league will grow much more when some of these restrictions on base salaries Yeah, I mean, change. I, mean I think that was some of the whole... I, I think that getting rid of TAM, and, and that helps um, yeah. because it makes it a little more transparent. It's a little easier to sort of understand. 
um, for everybody's following. I know it seems complicated in here. If you go through and read this stuff, it's, it actually got a little simpler uh, in terms of some of this stuff. I know it doesn't sound that way. I know the charts don't seem to point that way, but it did get simpler. Um, they're also, you're also seeing you know, an increased um, sort of uh, investment by, by the owners. I mean, uh, there are player bonuses for starting, starting bonuses, winning bonuses, um, scoring, but like there's all these player bonuses that now can get pay paid out as well. And how does this affect ticket prices? Because I, mean, I know from the Premier League, you get all that TV money, you've got all this stuff going on, and then the next thing, what what happens is a hike in prices for fans, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the the big loss here is the salary cap, right? It didn't increase like you you're saying take the handcuffs off right yes a little bit and and that's not what happened right. um, you didn't see it in fact you saw some additional handcuffs sort of place as you were talking about the designated players so um listen the the reason this this deal probably got done is the owners are already negotiating that 2023 media rights deal that's already happening um you do it well in advance of when it's going to be coming up so um you would have to imagine they don't want to see a work stoppage they don't want to see bad press i mean there was no bad press about this at all that's unheard of it got signed three weeks before the season started that's is, unheard is that of. because it's mls and the attention well actually you know nfl there always seems to be some argy bargy as we say back in england about negotiations someone's always upset about something it does seem that it's been pretty seamless but it's also been going on a while so perhaps you know, rather than kick up a fuss in public, they aired their dirty laundry laundry behind closed doors. Yeah, I mean that was that was it. And they've also been talking for a while. And I think that they I, again, I think you have to give some credit, um, probably more credit than than people want to to the players who said that they were more than willing to strike and have a work stoppage this time. And they were very adamant about that from the very beginning. So, you know, usually these deals don't get done with a ton of pressure. The fact that this one got done outside of that pressure. Is, is a good thing. And quite honestly, it allows you and I to stop thinking. I mean, I saw people booking yeah. their Houston flights. They're like, oh, I'm going to Houston now. Like, I'm good because now we know the season's starting. Right. Because um, people were asking me before. I said it was 70-30 at the beginning of the offseason that I didn't think they, were, they would start on time. Um, I absolutely didn't think this, this season would happen. I was totally wrong, which was crazy because um, they approached this differently this year. Yeah. Um, but, that's you know, a good thing in terms of is. negotiation and the way the deal came together. That's a good thing we've seen with the NHL and NFL, like, and baseball. You, you know, there's been lockouts before and stuff like that too. So, as long as football's being played and everyone's being compensated fairly and players are being treated uh, fairly, that's the most important thing. So, it's always going to be really difficult, isn't it? Like, even at work, if you're working for a company and you know the person next to you is earning like 150 grand right. and you're on 55, right. it's it's tough. It's not easy. And I think that's the part that people are finding hard to kind of get their head around with the league. Uh, by the way, I have players who literally ask me, Sophie, for the uh the the actual like player salaries whenever i do lists and stuff like that i have they i've had players for a copy yeah they're like hey can you just send me that i'm like i'm like paper i'm like in excel or or pages <laughs> and they're like uh oh, oh, pages or excel or whatever and i and i send it over to them and then they're like oh man i didn't know this guy was making more money than me like or the blah, oh, blah blah so like no. it, it happens that totally happens if, if you think yeah. players don't do that of you're of course you're they do crazy. and the fact that they make all this public right i mean come on would you like your salary to be made public and then everyone else is salary to be made public there's no need for that yeah it's uh it's gonna be it, again i think this is the one thing i didn't mention i think free agency which was a big deal as well eight years of service and 28 years old was the old free agency which didn't apply to very many players right uh now it's five years of service and 24 years old are the minimum requirements which i think opens the or, or expands the player pool by half um, so a lot of players are going to be holding off on contract signings to be free agents. Uh, wow. There's a ton of restrictions in terms of how much money they can make when they go be a free agent, how much right. increase they can get. That's there was literally a whole page of that stuff. I did. I'm like, I'm. I don't need to know that. That doesn't what, bother me. What year did you say, Josh? The TV deal was up for grabs. Uh, I think 2023 is whenever the it's new one will be in place. So they'll be uh, they'll be doing it. And remember, MLS said not to renew any. Uh, local broadcast through 2021, I think. So 2022, 2023 is whenever we should see new broadcast deals go and, okay. and, and how that goes. And by the way, we're talking about media rights, Sophie, that are worldwide now because yes. MLS plays in the off season, oh, which yeah. we've saw, seen as a detriment, uh -huh. is now a positive because they're being sold all over the world because Absolutely. MLS is playing when everybody else is taking breaks. Yeah, and especially with all the South American players um, here now too and, and what that means to kind of broadcast opportunities in South America as well. So... Yes, uh, very exciting stuff. And 
I hope you guys, can I just take 30 seconds to say, I hope you guys appreciate what Josh puts together here because I don't know if he's shown you all the slides. You should run through no, them. Did I, you do the, did I, you I show the compensation slide? Uh, let's like, see. I'm, I'm not joking I'll, here. I'll, I'll run, I know I, I talk about quick. your blue paper and I have a little, you know, the budget rules, the compensation, like all the stuff that he puts together in his free time and really does his research and everything is just brilliant. And the key features, the 1.9 billion plus on the investment. I mean, that that all came, I, listen, I can't take credit. I do my own charts and I do this. A lot of this came from the players union who put it of out. Of course and, it does. And, but, but you have to put it together for the uh, the, the COG universe. Yes, yes. And, right? and I know there were people waiting for me to put out a, uh, a CBA article today. I think someone in chat called you Einstein. Yeah, they probably did. That's, that's ridiculous. That's I'm not very smart. My only, like, I, I get angry when things get easier because I'm like, my only claim to fame here is being able to understand all these stupid MLS rules and that's where I, I you know basically I think it's great the way your brain thinks but this is fantastic and and look you know the league look look at all this stuff I mean when you started talking about football and you did your podcast there's no way some of this stuff was even happening for these players no, no it wasn't no it was and you know and that's really whenever you look at at the growth that you've seen and I think everybody's sort of talking about that especially you know 25th anniversary of the league and you sort of look back and say you know this league almost folded you know Phil Anschutz uh, kept this league alive uh, and and now you know now it's it's what it is and you have you know two new teams with Inter Miami and Nashville coming in and you know granted Nashville looks like they might be a dumpster fire although apparently they're selling out Nissan Stadium like they're opening up another section with their with their opening game so yeah. that's a that's a great deal I mean as it should be I mean Ian Air is pretty a pretty good executive so I'm assuming that they're going to be just fine in Nashville but uh, we all know where it's at. Yeah, it, LA is the rivalry. This well, is it. This is well, and and also I think LA is you know as as uh, as they often say LA is you know the sports capital of the United States um, with the Lakers and well now you know, the Clippers everybody. are good. Clippers. The Lakers, you've got Mookie Betts maybe with the Dodgers coming right? to the Dodgers. Uh, the Kings, hopefully, you know they go through peaks and troughs, but if you look at the Stanley Cups, they've won in the last you know ten years and stuff like that. It's uh, it's a good. It's a good time. LA sports is a good time. It went through a bit of a lull. Yeah. Um, you know, which unfortunately Kobe had to experience that lull with the Lakers, you know, before he retired and stuff too. But I, I, I those games last year, I know Zlatan helped set them on fire. Right. But I think they're going to be differently set on fire this season for other reasons. Yeah. yeah. And I think that we'll be just fine post, post the Zlatan era. It should be, uh, should be fun to watch. I don't know. Fun. To, I, I really think this whole season could be fun. Um, I just want to remind everybody of uh, Victoria Block Party coming up on Saturday. Um, this will give you a first look at the Victoria Block, the club's new safe standing section. I saw pictures of the section completed. I saw grass on the berm back behind there. No more seats on the berm. Uh, there's going to be a first team training session on the stadium field. Post training food for purchase. Uh, they're playing foot pool. Have you ever played foot pool? You know, it's like. Those, Is that the one with the gigantic like it's ball? Yeah, well, it's like the normal soccer balls, but it's on a pool table that's on the ground. Right. Type thing. Yeah, football. Right, yep, right. is there. Uh, LA Galaxy Foundation auctions and mystery tins for exclusive LA Galaxy what's gear. What's a mystery tin? So, like, you buy this tin yeah. and you don't know what's in it, but you pay like twenty bucks, and it could be a signed Zlatan shirt, or it could be something that's worth twenty five bucks. So you Dos don't know. Santos, uh, yeah, a, a, wristband a, a medical wristband. The... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be worth. That's priceless, <laughs> right? So, um, so that's sort of uh, sort of what that's going I on. I did try to take something for you the other day, but we won't talk. about Yeah, it no, online. no, it didn't work out. It's okay. We're gonna figure that out. Uh, LA Galaxy first team um, is gonna be there. The coaching staff, some LA Galaxy alumni are gonna be there as are well. Are you gonna be there? I am. I well, okay. Listen, let me always preface this uh, with my my two month old. Uh, little boy Jake, um, we're I'm gonna try and actually Jake and my wife might come as well. So wow. that could, you could have the whole Guessman clan and Jake's first trip to uh, Dignity Health Sports Park. I uh, mean, it's going to be where he plays. Right? You so, may as well get the kid used to that's it. That's right. I see. I, I certainly <laughs> see, I think that is. And I know people are certainly, they're talking about the $500 meet and greet to meet Chicharito. Um, you know, and people are complaining about that. I know all that money goes to charity. So if you're in a position to be blessed by that, go ahead and do that. Okay. Can I just say, yeah. sir, the Rolling Stones, New Kids on the Block, right. NSYNC, right. the Jonas Brothers. Yes. If you don't BTS. think they charge people to go backstage then you live in a in a universe where 
you know, unicorns do I, actually I, exist. I just watched uh, the Taylor Swift, uh, or I'm not even all the way through, the but Netflix. the Netflix uh-huh. documentary they did on her, and everybody knows that I'm a huge, you know, T. Swizzle you, fan. Are you? Oh yeah, big. My giant. friend directed her music video. So why don't I see? I need the connections. That's what I need. Um, the T. Swizzle, and so I told my wife, I'm like, come on, we have to meet her. I'm like, how how do we make this happen? And she goes, we just have to pay for that VIP. I'm like, and we'll take the kid with us, and we'll look adorable. That's a perfect way to do it. That's our oh, Christmas man. card from here on out. Wow. You know, so anyway, she actually christened the child of uh, yeah. someone I know. See, there you go. Uh, that's, I'll tell you that, who it is. That's one, that's, not, yeah. not, not, not live. That, that, yeah. that works for me. So anyway, no. Um, so all that stuff, it, certainly. I, I will say I've been to some of these events, both as press um, and way back in the day, probably as a fan. Um, I've been to some of these press event, press things and, and seen this stuff, and it's always pretty high quality. You get a signed Chicharito. I know it's a lot of money. They're clearly trying to do it to, to make sure that not everybody can afford it. I mean, you don't charge $500. And I'm you... not offended by it at all. Are you offended by it? And this happens all the time in, in sports and entertainment and, and popular culture. And as people are saying in the chat room, go to training and you can meet them for free. And I can't condone that because I'm not supposed to say that you're able to do that, but you can, so go ahead and do that. Um, so right. th- that was pretty easy, right? That was, yeah, I, yeah. I skirted that law right around the way. Uh, so anyway, this takes place between 3 and 8 p.m. The first team training session starts at 5 p.m. I imagine I'll be there closer to 5 p.m. because um, I'm probably not going to be able to stay that long. So anyway, um, so that's what we have. I want to do a, a retraction and correction. Um, Uh-oh. Yeah, I know. Uh, the Galaxy put their preseason roster out. They put it online. I copied it. I did it. I did it perfectly. Then after we had a show, they changed it and added one more player because we said Tom Smart wasn't on that. He is on it. He's on the preseason roster. He's there. He's player number 29. Excuse me, wearing number 28, but he's the 29th player um, in the preseason right now for the LA Galaxy. Cut so he's pace there. job uh, killed you right there. They, you know, it's, whatever. It is what yeah. it is. Um, so that's how it is. I think that's it, Sophie. I think that's all we have. Someone's I mean, asking about rumors, and they have oh, not let up. Yeah, like, I know. They're like, okay. if you do not share some rumors. Yeah. There, uh, and th- chat room, I've got your back here. There like. is still a chance that, as I have hinted, that there is somebody in line for that central defender role. Uh, it is an international player. Uh, I believe the player is Dutch. It is not the one that everybody has talked about. Um, but we don't know enough details to be able to release anything on it. So that's where we sit right now. Currently playing in Holland or somewhere else in Europe? Uh, I believe he's playing... For Arsenal? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. That's what <laughs> no. it was. No, I think he's in the Ir- Eredivisie. So I think he is in, okay. in Dutch. Um, it's not a name that I immediately recognize. Um, so I will, I'll have to do it. If that happens, we will, we will make, we will tell you who it is. And if we know that something's going to happen, I'll tell you right now that the Galaxy seem to have gone through two or three center backs already and not landed them. So they're still looking for that. And I believe that they focused in on one, and we'll see whether or not that happens. Uh, we are not getting a whole bunch of rumor information. Either the Galaxy are doing a very good job at keeping it quiet, or they're not as active as maybe they, it would start stirring things up. Um, so we're just sort of seeing all that stuff right you now. You feel like this is the missing piece, right? The yeah, the, one. The, 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 it, this there's one two. Piece. There's still two. There's a defense, and there's you still an attacking. You mentioned the those at the beginning, but isn't this more important the uh, the attacking? I think. Wrong. Um, I think that that defense, the defensive side of thing, is going to end up being more important. But you're also uh, sort of. Uh, leaning on the fact that you're expecting Javier Hernandez to stay healthy, and I, I think you should because he's you know getting paid he's a ton of money, good. and he's usually yeah, pretty, he's, pretty he's, he's a pretty healthy guy. Yeah. Um, so that's not a problem. But you still need to have a backup plan, and in my mind, putting Pavone up there is not a great backup plan. I don't love it. You can play him there. I would love to see where they shift him up there and play him with Javier Hernandez sometimes and go to a four four two a little bit more. Um, but Having said that, I'm not sure that the Galaxy have the depth that striker. We talked about Ethan Zubak, who scored a goal in the, in the thing. He is obviously a depth piece for uh-huh. the LA Galaxy this year. I'm not sure he's first off the bench to back up Javier Hernandez, though. So yeah. I, I think that's important. So those, the defense and the offense, those I think are equally important. So um, so we'll see uh, see what happens. Um, yeah, that's it. I, I, there's not a lot of bunch of rumors. I, we didn't really have a rumor update on my show notes because I was like, I don't know if there's much. But that's sort of what we know and, and, and where we're thinking. Um, again, I would check on Twitter tomorrow to see if we can find out what's up with Jonathan Dos Santos. Um, I will try to publish that and, and as soon as I know everything and, and know anything um, and I hear from the LA Galaxy. So um, we'll see if we can we can do that. Um, anything, Amazing. Are you good? I have I think I have aired all the laundry, you dirty gonna, and clean. You were going to be out at the live show on 222, yes? 
I would love to be part of the live show okay, on good. 222 I don't, and swing I, by and say hello. I Pretend know we're going to be Chicharito. There you go. You in could case be. he doesn't come say hello. Uh, I mean, he should, right? Why yeah, not? he should. No, I mean, the, yeah. the players are going to be the tough part. The, uh, this is a cool thing you're doing. I'm really excited for you. Doing a remote broadcast, and trust me, it is not easy. It takes a lot of organization. My car is going to be filled with so much audio equipment. You're, you're, you're we got Larry's car, too. Yeah, we'll, right? make Larry, we'll make Larry drive up. Yeah, Larry's going to be there as well. So, uh, All right. I think that about you does don't it. want Baxter's car involved in anything <laughs> no <laughs> that yeah that that's true that, that blue monstrosity i know i know well i'm also building uh, did you see my lego I'm, I'm building the lego old trafford that they released they have the old trafford stadium um and and i'm building i know i knew you would like this too but i know how imagine that that thing's Fine. in here and kevin comes into the studio all the time oh that's, I mean, great. that's great no you're yeah, right right I'm, I'm all for that okay absolutely good yeah. good, good, good. Yeah, all right yeah. uh why don't you tell people where they can find you sophie and um, uh, we'll get out of here i'm right. at soccer diva and if you're interested at all uh, arsenal and premier league european football chat at Highbury squad thanks so much you always you guys are always very kind to me and thanks josh for having me you rock Awesome. Thank you so much. It's going to be a good season, in. mate. I, I think it is as well. All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, uh, it's at Jay Gessman, J G U E S M A N. And of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over there uh, for all of the news and information. We we'll usually put it there on Twitter. If you're looking for the podcast, cornerofthegalaxy.com, all of our stories, all of our videos, all that stuff is right there, cornerofthegalaxy.com. Details on our live show will be up there within a week or so as well. So check that out. Live show, February 22nd, 2 p.m. Make sure you're there. We'd love to to see you there and we look forward to having you all right i think that about does it for us a very busy busy week with the cba a lot of stuff we'll be back on monday with the panda himself to update you more on what happened over the weekend uh let's see for miss sophie nicolau i'm josh Gessman. you've been listening to corner of the galaxy on corner of the galaxy.com have a great one everybody you've been listening to the corner of the galaxy podcast on corner of the galaxy.com you can follow the show on twitter and instagram at galaxy podcast And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.